Hi all, welcome to the new show. So this is going to be something really different. We're going to cover my history, my past, the cars, where I grew up, how I became who I am. And to help me do that is my mate Dale. So I met Dale when I moved over to Wollongong about 15 years ago. Yeah, that's right. And that all happened through golf, believe it or not. So most people know I'm a golfer. And I joined the club in Wollongong here over at Port Kembla, Port Kembla Golf Club. Correct. And I'd had a couple of years off and had to get my handicap back and then turned up to play. And the first time I played, I played with Dale. So you yeah. might tell the story, mate. Yeah, no, that's, I can't believe it's 15 years. Um, yeah, so we had, normally have a regular Saturday crew and one of the boys pulled out and the pro came out and said, oh, I've got a new, new member who's just joined up. Would you mind if he had a game with you? I said, sure. You know, without being too big headed, we were all um, A grade golfers. And he said, no, this guy's a pretty good golfer. I'm, okay, cool. So came out and we all teed off and the other couple of boys, they were a bit out in front. They, they went off and so Howard and I were walking up the, the fairway and we exchanged scorecards and I looked at the scorecard and I said, Howard Astor, you're not the Howard Astor from Broken Hill. And you've been hearing that ever since, haven't you? <laughs> yes, he doesn't let me forget it. No, not me. But it's no. all the other guys. Yeah, no, that's yeah. true. But I said, look, I, look, Howard, I've followed you for a long time. I said, you've built some hot cars. Pity they've all been Fords, but hey, you know, you, you can't choose everything. But no, we've hit it off um, really well ever since. And I've even worked for Howard for a couple of years there. And uh, yeah, good time. So it'd be, be good to go through and tell a bit of a story and, and, and do a bit of backtracking to, to tell what, you know, where How Howard's it come from. Exactly. Yeah, so, so the idea was to go back and give you an idea about, you know, where I come from, which is Broken Hill but also what makes me who I am, how I managed to do the build the cars and all that sort of process. And Dale's background, not only is golf, but it's cars as well. So you had a HK? HK, yeah, yep, 327 Bathurst. I'll start to cry now. Um, <laughs> Just yeah. another one of those guys. Another one of those car. guys, yep, yeah. yep, yep. Yeah. Um, had a few EHs and Geminis and you know, all sorts of Yeah, did the things Summonats and, a few times. Yeah, yeah, went to Summonats. I remember going to the, the second Summonats and seeing the rental car with the chopped out springs and the moon discs. And I think it had no springs, actually. I think it had no springs, yeah, actually. Exactly. You're probably right. So. so we'll be able to tell a few of those mm. yarns, but where I wanted to go, and this will be almost educational for you as well, mm. but right back to the start. So um, almost like an autobiography, I guess, but it's really to give people an understanding about who I am and where I come from and, and how everything evolves. So we've got a bit of a slideshow running here and we'll get Josh to overlay some of that over to, to make it interesting if you look at our mugs all night. Yep. So the idea now is we'll actually go through the process and this will probably run, you know, 15, 20 episodes because believe it or not, I've built 15 cars now. So as we get into the build phase of the cars, yep. Each episode will feature the car, but also what was happening in my life around the same time as that car. Yeah, there's a lot of background um, to each car, you know, that nothing's, nothing's the same. No, so all the early ones were obviously mm. mine, and then yep. I think the Mustang was eight, so from nine through to, I think it's 15, 15. the one I'm up to now, will be customer cars, so there'll yep. be a bit of that sort of stuff in as well. So yep. hopefully you'll find it interesting. So the first slide I got up, Dale, is uh, my dad on a push bike. Yeah, so I, I wonder where Howard got his competitive spirit and I didn't have to look too far back to figure that out. So yeah, it's, uh, what do they say? The acorn doesn't fall far from the tree? Something like that. Mm -hmm. Actually, I might have to duck out in a minute because the cup <laughs> that's in that photo, I meant to have on, on yeah. hand to, to be able to sort of parade that. But yeah. yeah, so my dad started off on push bikes and they used to race at Broken Hill, they yep. had a couple of different tracks there. Yep. And then of course, as you do, he, he progressed into motorbikes and yep. was part of a motorbike group. I don't think they were called a gang back then, no. but they were a group, there's a whole lot of guys and they, they were um, known as the ice pickers. Okay. And I've got his yep. ice picker tie in the cupboard yep. as well in my office that um, was part of all the memorabilia when my dad passed. So had a lot of bikes yep. and then as when he actually retired, he got hold of quite a few of those bikes, not his bikes, but the same yep. ones, yep. and rebuilt those. Yep. And they were mainly aerial, so he had an aerial square four, a red hunter, um, yeah. uh, a thousand single, and then he had a couple of Harley, he had a Harley war bike and yep. a few others, so we'll throw some of those photos yep. up later super, as well. Super collectible. Yeah, and of course, 
I mean, that's a great slide. Mum and Dad went on their honeymoon on a motor white sidecar. <laughs> and, and it's funny, living in Broken Hill, it's, um, what, 1,200 k's to Sydney, and, and Dad's mum way. was, my grandmother was in Sydney, and they went to Sydney, but I believe the road was like 50% dirt. So you can imagine how many days that took on a motorbike and sidecar. So, yeah, there's always been that, that automotive spirit. Yep. Yep. And along with that is the cars and the family, and we were always sort of part of that whole process, I guess. And the, there's a photo there of um, the team model and that, that car How, um, how is the one in the, the middle? Family. He's in the middle. Yeah, I'm the little the guy. The cute bonnet. I'm the little guy. <laughs> and that car, I'm pretty sure my brother still got it. Okay. Because when Dad was getting to the end mm. of his time, he was sort of unloaded the vintage cars onto all of yep. us and being a good son home, I sold mine and <laughs> put the money into the Mustang. But um, yeah, so the, it's interesting that um, this, those cars have always been there and there's some pretty cool photos here as well of the um, some of the hill climb cars and that particular photo with number 95 on it there, that is taken on the hill climb that's outside of Silverton. Yep. And people would recognise Silverton possibly as being right next to Monday Monday Plains is where they shot Mad Max. Mad Max, Mad Max yep. too. So Absolutely. that was shot in Broken Hill, or just outside of Broken Hill, yep. and that hill climb in that photo, which I'm sure is not this one, but it could be, and it's quite crazy when you look at that with just a chassis and a steering wheel and four wheels. I don't even know what's run on that one. It must have been a motorbike engine or something. They were daredevils. But clearly that was before you know I was around or, or got too much inspired by those because I wouldn't know much about it. But that little one on top there, when myself and my brother Reg, we used to push that around the neighbourhood. And if you got stuck where you were pushing, standing between the wheels, yep. the front spring mount used to grab you on the ankle and, and flatten you and then they'd roll over you. So I remember that one really well. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's it there, that little fella there. So okay. Dad made that. Yep. And you can see the earthenware in the background there. Dad was a plumber. And he's, um, when he did his apprenticeship was when the sewer got put on in the 50s, so he obviously made a few bucks because yes. um, everybody yeah. else had to have the plumbing done. So um, keep them rolling, mate. So yep. another one there. Good so, old 95, but you must have liked that number. You must have liked that number. I don't know if that's the same car with it, and it might have got a rebuild. I've been pre stripped down. So then, besides cars, it was boats. Mm. So you liked his boats. You liked his boats. So when I was growing up, we used to go to the lakes up at Menindi. Yes. So you came there with me, yes, I think. Yes, I did. Yeah, we did, did when we yeah, went out yep, there. Yep, we and out. Um, so Menindi is 100 k's towards Sydney from Broken Hill, mm. and it's on the Darling. Yes. And my dad and I think four or five others set up a um, committee or a group or whatever, and they got the rights to be able to set up a speedboat club on Copey Hollow. And they, as a group, work with the Water Resources Commission to actually turn that lake into a permanent water base basically and then set up a club there and as a kid we used to go up there every weekend all year round because even in the winter that was work and be time yeah. and there's a really cool photo in there with, with my dad and um, Murph Barry laying bricks okay. and that's the sort of that my, sort of bloke my dad was is mm. that basically you know there was a a job to be done, he'd yep. be the first in to jump in and, and help getting it done. So KP Hollow became our second life, so we had a shack up there and um, we used to go every weekend. So that brought the whole boat thing into it, but my dad being my dad, he didn't just have a boat, he built boats. Yeah. As you do. As you do. So I don't know where that started, but I know he, as I was growing up, when I was probably eight or ten, he had, um, we lived next to the workshop and one bay of the workshop had the, the fiberglass mould and they used to make the clinker boat hull boats and that enabled him to be able to keep funding what he was doing and of course ended up racing boats. Yes. Yeah, so the boats then were the old clinker hull with a bench seat so you used to still a bit of sliding, you know, <laughs> in there. And exactly. um, I've got it, my brother's digging out some photos for me now and I'll have those ready for when this goes to air to be able to put some of those really cool old boats up. And for whatever reason, Dad early on ran Chrysler's. Okay. And I can remember at one point where the Chrysler he had, he actually had bought a manifold that took eight single strommies. 
That was high tech in the that day. That was pretty high tech back then, mate. So then the big move is he eventually went Chev. Like most people go Chev, I we won't even go there. But, <laughs> so he ended up with Chev's. So the little photo there, that's me. I don't know who's with me there, sitting on the tube up at Capey by the look of it, and that looks like one of the race boats. So each May they used to have the May races at Capey, mm -hmm. and a lot of boats used to come up from Adelaide and Victoria and, and race there, and, and um, that's how Dad ended up getting more and more into it. So the boat there, Elizabeth, so that's the old man there, and my sister Colleen and my brother Ridge and myself, and Elizabeth was my mum's name. Yep. So that was um, one of the really early. So that's before the fiberglass one. That looks like an actual timber boat. Yep. And then the next one there is um, my grandfather, Les Radford, was, you know, crane operator, earth mover, you know, broken hill type you had, boat. You had to be mouldy skilled. Yeah. And mum was the youngest of 11. So there was a fair tribe of them. Yeah. So once again, you know, if you went out and seen um, grandma, there was trucks and cranes yes. and... All lots all lots things, of toys to play all with. All things yep. mechanical. Yep. So, the next photo there now is um, one of the big cars. We always had, you know, big dogs, Phoenixes, and um, later on, LTDs, and all sorts of wonderful and mm. beautiful cars. And that obviously had an influence mm. over what we do. And, and you know, the Astles, we go about Astles didn't like to be just, you know, run of the mill. We'll stick with the standard thing. We want, you know, something a bit of style. Got to get it out there, mate. Bit of substance. You got to get yeah. it out there. Yeah, that's you good. Get it out that's there. good. So, that's the house that was next door. So that was in Jabers Street in Broken Hill, and next door to that was the workshop. So Dad bought the workshop that had a lot of land, and he okay. subdivided it, yep. and he built a house, made a buck, sold that, built this house that we lived in for quite some time, and then the workshop was next door, and then eventually sold that house, but always had the workshop and. You'll see later on in, in some of the other videos as we get into the panel van and stuff where there was a hoist out the front, outside, and that's where I used to work on the car and cars mm. and all that sort of stuff. So it was pretty lucky in that way. And yeah. I mean, because Dad was a plumber, a tank maker, there was guillotines and rollers and yep. grinders. We've still got a few of his tools here. I actually remember reconditioning a couple of the things here for... Yeah, he had a lot of good stuff. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's every day I pick up a hammer or something and you know, yep. something reminds you of Dad. And yep. How it went. So that's a cool one, mate. Uh, you know, middle class Australia, I guess. Yes, like I said, always stylish, the Astles. Looks like we're heading always out. Well, well dressed. Mum's got the gloves on. Yeah. Reg and I got our um, jackets. Yep. Even my sister's got her gloves on. So, yeah, I mean, Broken Hill was an amazing place in the sense that there was a lot of wealth there from the mining industry. Mm -hmm. And that reflected in the buildings, you know, the, music, the, yep. the, the buildings that the council built and all those sorts yep. of things in the turn of the century, you know, way before we come along. Yep. But then, you know, in the 50s, and then, um, I, don't, I, was, I was only thinking about this the other day, I, I'm, I'm not a church goer, but it's not that I'm not religious, you know, my mum mm -hmm. was very religious and, and she found, you know, the church later in life when she was sort of in the 70s. But I do remember going to, Sunday school, as yep, we did, yep, and all yep. that sort of stuff. Yeah, so a lot, of, a lot of Aussie kids did that, for sure. Yeah, so we did all that, but then on the the, the other turn of the side of that is, is the photo there, the old Val, Valiant Ute with the six before with me on the back. We used to go up the bush and shoot a few ducks and yep. catch a the, few yaddies. The holiday home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> Dad didn't mind a beer as well to go with it. So there he is, laying a brick. Well, so, you said he was a plumber. He is a plumber. He well, does like everything. Me, mate. He does everything. <laughs> There's not much for us Astles don't do, mate. No, Self-taught, see? Yeah. So... Can't be that hard. That was, that was funny like that in the sense that I worked for my dad for 20 odd years um, in the family business. And we did a lot of all sorts of things. He still had the plumbers running and, and we were moteliers primarily. But when I was only a young bloke, um, if, they were, if they had the painters in doing mm -hmm. some work at the motel, then he'd say to the painter, you know, my lad will be a labourer. But what was happening is he was teaching me how to paint. Yep. So I can paint, I can mm -hmm. tile, I can lay concrete. Yep. Just have, I haven't laid a brick, but there's not much I can't do because no. the old man gave me that opportunity. That's true. Know? And I know we've, we've, you've told me the story about when you had to do a bit of painting on, on the eaves and guttering and all that sort of stuff. And you had to scrape the old paint off and do it. It's all done right, yep. the right way. Yep. You know, no shortcuts. Yeah, and he and he Preparation's was Preparation's the key. And he was on you, mate. Oh, he was. <laughs> he was on you. 
Yeah, he's a yeah. hard taskmaster, and, yeah. I, and I mean, there was a lot of times where you sort of go, oh, he's a pain in the ass, you know, but that was all about... You still remember how, don't teaching you? Teaching you how to do it, mate. That's, That's right. right. So, mate, moving off the old man a bit, there's a, there's a cool photo. So, put the little square around my head yeah. in the middle there. So, um, It's an advertisement why we, why we wear helmets when we're racing for aerodynamics. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, North Broken Hill Public School, mate. Yeah. Yeah, so... Had it was a, a big joint. There. You had more than one school at Broken Hill. Broken Hill, at that time, probably had 30,000 people. Mm. Yeah. It was a big it's, town. It's down to it was a city, 16. it wasn't a town. Yeah, it was the uh, second city in New South Wales, I mm. think. Yeah, so it was a city in 1920 or something like that. Yep. So, um, cream rises the top, mate. Didn't quite get to the top. Perfect, the perfect prefect, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Mm. I think I might have even been vice captain by memory, but. Um, captain yeah. of vice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got the wing nuts going? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're smiling there, Howard. That's, that's yeah, something that, different. That's, that's good. Different. People said he didn't smile, but it's true, he does. So there you go, mate. There's a nice, nice um, professional photo. Very professional, Howard. Always stuck my hand up, mate. I was prefect that. Um, at North School and I ended up at Prefect at, at Borden School and ended up down there again but I always work on the basis if you if you somehow or other at the top you got some way of controlling your own destiny mm. I guess. Yep uh, it's easy to give orders than it is to take them sometimes but. For some. For some. <laughs> so that's cool one mate that was um, senior boy champion mate. Swimming. So I was a swimmer. Mm. Yeah so that was a um, you know the every morning get out of bed drag yourself down the pool. The Ian Thorpe of uh, Broken Hill. Well, no, didn't quite no, have the didn't feet. Quite get the didn't the quite have the feet. Yeah, yeah. Didn't Need a bigger feet. Set off. And a soccer player. And, and captain, no less. I believe that's why you're holding the ball. Well, I think the captain gets the ball, doesn't he? Oh well, he's usually in charge. Yeah. So that's good. So the disappointing part was, as I've already mentioned, I went to boarding school. So when I finished primary, I went to boarding school. They didn't play soccer at the college. No. So I had to play Aussie rules then. So that was a bit tough because I hadn't been tackled before. <laughs> I was a bit soft, mate. <laughs> that was a bit soft. Okay, what's going on there? And it was Aussie yeah, rules. It wasn't the hard game. It wasn't NRL. It was Aussie rules. But anyhow, we, yeah. we adapted. Yep. We adapted. I think when I first got down there, I was a rover because I was a little fella. And then by the time I got to third or fourth year, I was um, playing full back. So I must have put a few inches on my yep. Yeah. Just to grow a bit. A couple of, couple of inches and a couple of kilos. I reckon. Yeah. So. Um, and then you graduated from AFL to do a bit of sculling, so to speak. Bit of yeah, rowing. Bit of rowing, mate. Rowing. In the eight, mate. So, yeah, yeah when I went down there at, um, in Adelaide, I went to school, Scotch mm -hmm. College, and um, we used to row on the Torrens. Okay. And the value of that was you had to get the bus into town and then do your rowing training and yep. you'll get a trip home. So, when you lived at the school, it was pretty good to get out. But yeah. I actually loved that. If I if I lived in Adelaide, I probably would have kept rowing because it's it's one of the most satisfying things I've ever done in the sense that it's a, obviously a team sport because there's yep, eight, eight, eight of you in the boat. Yep. But looking at the photo there, if, if someone in there gets a bit behind or a bit slack, you end up with an oar in the middle. And I actually loved the sport. Mm. Um, really, really loved the sport. And the fact that I've moved back to Broken Hill, there's no water. No rowing, so a bit dry. I took up squash, I think. So squash, I couldn't see you playing squash. Golf, yes, I, I get yeah, the golf. No, I found golf very, very late. Yeah, actually, I was okay. forty before I played golf. Okay, but I was. Um, you yeah, just had to do something competitive, so that's understandable. Yeah, yeah, I played. Yeah. I played pretty good squash for a few years there. Um, well, we're going backwards now, but that's all right. So there's a photo there of three boys with the long hair. Looks like they're must a rock be the group. Must be the seventies. <laughs> Looks like they're out of a rock group. <laughs> So that's a couple of the boys out of the, the dormitory that year. So Tim Howard and, and um, oh, the name escapes me, the other boys, but yeah. So that's the college. Yep. Um, this is the footage you take before you had a drone. Yeah, so I, I, was, I looked at that photo because it was in an old album I dragged out and I took a photo, you know, the photo out of the yep. photo to get it. And um, so yeah, so that picture's taken from the pine tree. As in up the pine tree. Yeah, so me and a mate climbed up the tree. No thanks. Which is, yeah. I don't know how high, it must be about a hundred foot or something. It's bloody high. It was high and then took the photo of the college on the way back. So, yep. and there's some more of the boys. So, when, when we, um, each year when you went through, so the first year I was at, 
I went down. So just another story, I guess. But my brother went down to Scotch first, mm -hmm. and I've told most people now. I'm sure my brother knows. This, everyone will know now, anyhow. But we're both dyslexic, and that runs in the family. Mm -hmm. So it's it's basically a they don't even call it a learning difficulty anymore, but effectively, you normally got really good hand skills, so you make good tradespeople and that yep. sort of stuff. Really good with numbers, mm -hmm. not so good with spelling. Yep. So for me, English was always difficult and never really did very well at it. And back in the 70s, early 70s, there wasn't a lot known about it. So yep. when it was diagnosed, my brother basically went to boarding school to help the yep. learning process with yep to make sure that you know we could add up and spell and do those sorts of yep. things. So when my brother went, I said, well, what about me? Can I go too? <laughs> yeah. Not knowing what I was getting myself no, into, probably. No. But so, You didn't talk to Reg, obviously. Yeah. So that was um, first year high school. Mm. So 13, packed up on the DC3, mate, from Broken Hill to Adelaide. That's the fly down and a um, couple of big suitcases and take your stuff down. So the first year I was there, um, we were in a separate, for the, the newbies, sort of kept away from the rest. You know, you, all their movies you see, the old English movies and yes. boarding schools. Yeah, yep. well, that's yep. pretty right. Yep. That's about how it goes. So, the first year, the dormitory I was in was about six or eight blokes, or kids. Mm -hmm. And then the second year, um, we moved up to the main college, which was what that picture was. Yeah, okay. And there was 18 in that room. And as you know, I'm a pretty good snorer. <laughs> so, that was a difficult time True. because um, you know is. people never held back. You know we're all just young fellas all living together, and and the thing was because we boarded, we went to school there, but we lived there, so you spent the weekend there, yeah. and you all ate meals together there, the whole yeah. thing. So I could tell hours and hours of stories about college life. But so the photo we've got there now is, I think the third or fourth year I was there, whereby you then got your own little cubicle. And it was basically uh, the length of a single bed and mm. roughly the width of a single bed. A dog box. A dog yeah. box. Not much bigger. Yeah. And you had <laughs> three drawers, one door, yep. and a desk to do your homework at. And as yep. you can see in the photo, the Pink Floyd pictures, that's where the Pink Floyd started from. And I had a little mini record player mm. that I used to play my Pink Floyd on. So he still plays his Pink Floyd. Still love Pink Floyd. Constantly. I've been listening to the same stuff. <laughs> uh, blows me away. Yep. Yeah. So. That was boarding school life, I guess. Yep. And, and then when I'd come home for school holidays, I then used to work for Dad. Mm. So whether it was at the plumber, and at that point in time, um, he'd started building a motel, so we're either building motel rooms or whatever. So yeah, pretty full life. Yep. And um, while all this was going on, um, my brother started a trade as a plumber, because Dad was a plumber. So what then my yeah. brother became a plumber. So yep. he left after, you, what now is year 10, I think. Yep. No. Yeah, we got seven, eight, no, year nine. Year so, nine, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so he was one of those, you know, apprenticeship early, yep. you know, so fully qualified by the time you're 20 or whatever. So he had a lot of toys, which we'll talk about later. Mm -hmm. um, Reg so, likes his toys. Reg had a lot of it's toys. An, it's a national thing. It's a national thing, yeah, <laughs> and very competitive, and, yep. very, yeah, and very good at, at a lot of what he did. So, it's a good shot there with my dad. I've got my me, uh, me checker shirt on, mate. They're all trendy again now. Yeah. You could just about wear that again now. So, there's a photo there now that's um, the Reuter family, which was one of dad's mates, and, and his adult son's there. And they were like 15 years older than us, I think, at the time. And when I was at boarding school, dad used to pick me up. He'd come down for the, the weekend or whatever, and he'd pick me up and take me to, to Rolly Park Speedway. So, once again, automotive, cars, V8s, yep. bikes. You, you didn't have a choice, did you, Howard? It's definitely in the blood. <laughs> it was in the blood, and if it wasn't, it was sort of, yeah. it was it was put in front of you. So yeah. I still, to this day, remember the smell of the fuel. Yep. So I don't know whether you've done much Speedway bikes, but Speedway bikes, they use cash, used to use the, with a solo, the oil goes in and it's total loss, so it goes yep. straight through, and yep. you get that smell. Yep. And. The, the, the stuff they put in the fuel, the Castrol R and all, it's just got a smell of its own. I yes. love solos, yeah. and, and I watch the the world stuff on on, um, on pay TV now. Which yeah. I, well, my, my father was a was a bit of a mechanic um, for a few only a racing. Bit of a mechanic. Only a bit of a mechanic, but for a lot of racing teams. So 
back when uh, Sydney Cricket Ground used to have the dirt track around the outside of the cricket ground. Yeah, that was unbelievable. I mean, and, I and seen it in yeah, Adelaide, so, I obviously didn't see it. In so yeah, so you know, there's a lot of memories, and and just down the road from where you live now, Howard is. Um, there used to be a, a little dirt oval track at Kemba Grange. Kemba Grange, Kemba Grange I've been told that a few and, times. Um, many a weekend, um, sniffing fumes and getting hit by flying dirt and clay and I'd always great remember times. we used to get um, the Teros. They used to have a little yep. plastic, a bit yep. like the horse riders use with yep. elastic band and used to pick one of them up off, off the where they blow off the track and yeah. you'd be standing down on the fence with the glasses on with all the bloody yeah. mud and shit going all over you. Yeah, great Yeah, time. I love all that stuff and, yeah. and my brother ended up Racing Speedway, and yeah. one of those guys there, Gary um, Gary Reuter, he ended up being the general manager of ROH, oh, the wheel company. The wheels, yeah. And he was a very good Speedway racer, um, very knowledgeable mm. on the tune-up in the suspension setup and all that, which he helped my brother a lot with. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that he raced um, midgets. Yeah. Okay. At Rolly mm -hmm. as well, and then his brother Wayne, he raced sidecars. So mate, you know, mm. what chance did you have? You didn't have a chance. <laughs> yeah. So that was all of that. So like I said, Reg had started work way earlier than me. Like mm. even though there's only 15 months between us, he'd sort of started about three years before me. So him and my, my cousin Roger were in uh, drag racing mm -hmm. and Broken Hill had an eighth mile track okay. called the Candy Wagon Rod Club. And it was a bitumen eighth mile and then had an eighth mile of dirt runoff and well there's plenty of room in broken hill to run off I'm yeah sure. that's right yeah so that's a good thing it ran and this was sort of before my time really i mean by the time i got to a stage where you probably could run something it had closed up and you know probably mm. insurances or whatever I don't know. Yeah. but i do recall and i spoke to reds the other day and he, he's got no photos unfortunately him and roger built a tea bucket from scratch okay so a bit of square tube yep for a chassis you got some tin you know rolled up a bit of stuff in the plumbing workshop to make the, the tub yep and they had an old 272 ford motor in it okay. and then they built a tunnel ram out of tube and stuff and they used to race that and i can remember when i'd come home from college that i'd go out with them racing hmm. and they had progressed and they had other things my brother had a, um, a front engine rail you know he used to sit in the back with the diff yep going over the legs and that sort of stuff they had a little 260 ford v8 in it so I'm in the process of trying to dig some of them photos out. He's on the job for me. Okay. So, motors, racing, cars. Yeah, bikes. Bikes. Boats. Boats. Cars, you name it. Had no, no hope, really. No. Yeah. So, been an interesting time, that's for sure. Mm. So, Dad got into the boats pretty heavy there for a while, and there's a boat there called Combine. And I can't remember the exact year that he bought that, but he went to the um, Australian titles, the boat race. Yep. And this particular boat was running 350 Chev and they, I'm pretty sure by memory it dropped the road or basically destroyed the engine anyhow. Mm -hmm. So the boys must have had the shit, so he bought the boat. Dad bought the boat while he's there, as you do. As you do. Yeah. yeah. So it basically came with no engine um, and then the motor down added in something else, so it was like, yeah, well, we can put this there and do that with that. And it was a Stevens hull, and it was, I believe, the hull builder was his boat. Okay. And I think the combine was a group of people that yep. you know made up. That was the combine story. Yep. And I might, be, you know, I might be wrong with this. Long time ago now, but we ended up with that boat. But it was a very fast boat because it had been blueprinted by the manufacturer. Yes. So it was yep. very good. So Dad put a 302 in it and built that up. And back, this is back in the day where you just couldn't go buy a set of aluminium heads or whatever. And I no. was digging through some stuff there the other day with Louise that I've got, um, when we cleaned all Dad's stuff out when he passed, I've actually got invoices and all where some of these engines were built. You know. Oh, yeah. it was, Two dollars something for this and twenty five dollars for that, and it might have been twelve hundred bucks. But when you think about twelve hundred dollars sixty years ago, it was a lot yeah, of money. Yeah, that's big coin. Yeah. Big so, coin. yeah, it was a lot went into that, and mm. then that ended up um, getting thrown around in, in the other boat because they had a bench seat and broke the done the shoulder big time. So that's when my brother started driving 
combine. Okay. So, got lots of stories I could tell about that, and I don't know how we're going for time tonight, but the thing is, is that a lot of what we did was, with that boat was the, the little tricks, engine tricks, we had no money. Yep. You know, no you budget, no budget for the build. But I, one of the things I can remember was that because the motor was a bit from here and a bit from there, we just needed a bit more top end. We actually took the, mo the, the inlet manifold off and port matched the inlet manifold to the heads. And they were a direct drive, went through a, like a V drive. Yes. That there's no gears, you just no. knock it into gear and away you yep. go. Yep. And we picked up 300 revs in the top end just by port just matching by the port. inlet yep. manifold to the heads. So those sort of things, that you messed around with mm. stays with you. you yep. And that was yep. when I was probably 15 I mean, I mean, or something. It's you know? an absolute given now, you know, you would never build a motor without matching ports and... Yeah, all that sort of stuff. All that sort of stuff is yeah. given, but you know, it, it, it wasn't always the way. Yeah. And you couldn't get like a special grind cam and this, you, you no. bought, and I'll never forget it, because with the Chev stuff, you had a pink cam and a white cam and a red, and I don't know where that all comes from, but yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, all of that was going on, and um, so my brother ended up going down the boat track. Yep. And in the next series, we'll, I've got some really good photos of some of the boats that he ended up racing. He ended up racing bridge to bridge, so okay. speed ski. Yeah. He raced yeah. circuit for a while, and then he went speed ski, and he won six litre bridge to bridge in the 90s, okay. and then he ended up going twin turbo. So that's that was sort of all happening when I was chasing the street machine yep. scene. He was playing boats, yep. and we only lived a few houses apart, so we'd be sort of backwards and forwards and yep. checking out what each out. other's yep. doing and what's going on. Very good. So, so mate, that gets us to, to sort of through my childhood, yep, um, and where a lot of the influence come from. Yeah. So then, next episode, which will be in a couple of weeks, I want to sort of follow through with some of that, and we'll have some more cool mm. photos of all the things that influenced me from my dad, my brother, friends, and then what I'd started to do myself. Yep. Because I had a little stint with motorbikes. Yes, yeah, so I think there's a few stories of motorbikes. Didn't it's go probably, so well. It's probably affecting your golf swing now, to yeah, this didn't day. Go, didn't, anyway, go, didn't go so well. Didn't go so well. It wasn't one of my better things. I, 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 I enjoyed the years I had mm. with the guys, mm. but I wasn't real good at it. So I'll give that no. away and got into the panel. Yeah. Stay tuned Stay for the next one. Thanks for joining us. Yep. I hope um, I hope it's enjoyable, and we'll be back in a couple of weeks for the next phase. We will. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, Howard.